Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex. That's me with the big red lettering. And the Ramble is the name of the program, and we're here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the other coast of the United States. Yes, out to San Francisco, California, where uh, I guess you're infected. Right, Larry we're Bubbles Brown? <laughs> And I've, give, I've given up. I don't think we're ever going back to normal. This is very depressing. Really? Yeah, it's just, uh, I know they got the vaccine, but, uh, yeah. I don't know. Are you going to take the shot? Oh, yeah, I'll take it. Sure. Why not? Okay. I got nothing to live for. Hey, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, why not? I mean, uh, it, to begin with, there's nothing dangerous about it. The worst it ha- the worst they've had so far, a few people who are allergic, but, uh, that happens with any vaccine, you know, uh, that's why they always ask you, are you allergic to eggs or something like that? You know, so you can get an allergic reaction to almost any of these uh, vaccinations, but on the whole, it looks like it's, you know, it's, pr- it, it doesn't. It does. It's not giving you the disease. It is simply protecting you against it. It's a, it's a different kind of vaccine. Oh, okay. Where a lot of times a vaccine is a killed virus, right? Yeah, that they're injecting into you. This is not the case. What they're doing is they're injecting something into you that allows your antibodies to work very fast and very effectively at fighting the disease. So. It, it it's not like uh, you're going to take the shot and all of a sudden you're going to come down with COVID and die. All right. So. Okay. So don't be a scaredy cat. So this is, is this the first time this has been done like this? Uh, this has been in development, believe it or not, for something like 18 years. Oh, you know a lot about this. Yeah. I didn't know enough. I don't know that much, but, uh, it's been in development for about 18 years, and they just simply been waiting for the uh, the virus to come along that it would be effective on. So uh, it's not like it's a new uh, a, a new thing, and they have been testing it, and they do know that it, it it's the the Pfizer is 95 percent effective after the second shot. After the first one, it's like I think 70 uh, percent effective. So, you know, I mean, that's pretty good odds. I'll go with it. You know. Yeah, they started uh, doing them in England yesterday or two right. years ago. Right. Did, uh, here's a, they, they, it's an old lady, 90-year-old lady they gave the first shot to. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you know who they gave the second shot to? No. Do you know the guy's name? I do not. William Shakespeare. <laughs> William Shakespeare, ladies and gentlemen, was the second person to get the shot in England. Was he a descendant? Uh, no, I think it is the William Shakespeare. Uh, he, no, hey, who knows if he's a descendant or not? But his name is William Shakespeare. I'm sure the last name was Shakespeare, and the family named him William because what else are you going to do, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so how are you doing out there? Just getting depressed. Yeah, there's nothing to do. So, do you, do do you go out running still? I ran yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you not supposed to do that? Uh, we can do that. Yeah, but uh, there's no. They had outdoor dining for a while, and that's been taken away. Uh-huh. From, even though I heard a doctor say from UCSF say there's absolutely no science. She thinks it's totally safe. So what? She wants to know why this is being... Well, being yeah, but there's out. always going to be somebody like that. Do you trust just one person saying it? Well, she said she wanted to see the science, which they haven't shown either. She said if you're six feet away, which you can do it outdoor, I, 
I don't see any reason why. I could see indoor, but not out. Well, they've shown six feet away. It may not be enough in some cases. It depends. If somebody sneezes, it's going to go further than that. Okay? So, I mean... Uh, I, you know, just because they always report the one doctor who says, I don't think this is real science. Yeah. And they probably voted for Trump. Right. You know, I mean, it, it, I just, I don't trust one person saying it. If a whole body of more than her and she's from UCSF, which I tend to have a lot of faith in. Yeah. But you know, they're quacks over there too. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You know, I mean, I I just think that it's better to be safe than sorry. This is a very, very pernicious flu. It is a very deadly flu. I mean, we're up to 285,000 people are dead in this country because of this flu. So... Uh, you know, it, it, that's enough for me to say, hey, I better, I, I better err on the side of caution. Wouldn't you say that? Come on, you're a hypochondriac like me. Yeah, but I got no reason to live. I kind of like it. <laughs> you have no reason to live. Larry Brown has no reason to live. Larry, you're a ladies' man. You get laid all the time, right? There's reason to live. Even if I were a ladies' man, you can't get laid in a pandemic. So. <laughs> Yes, you can if you've already had it and you have the antibodies. <laughs> I, I was going to I was going to start a a, a a a male prostitution ring of guys who've already had COVID and are now you know uh, immune, offering well, their services to women. Was saying there's a lot of uh, repressed women out there right now. Oh, so you might be right. If you, yeah, if you're, if you're, uh, if you, you had COVID and you're now immune, uh, or if you get the shot, uh, you're going to be so, uh, have you had your shot? Yeah. Well, you're really ugly, but wear the mask and we'll have <laughs> yeah. sex. That was a great You'll thing. Be gold. You know, it, actually, if you think about it, this, this has been a godsend for guys like you and me because being forced to wear a mask uh, makes us look very handsome. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have nice eyes, don't you? Yeah. Who yeah. doesn't? Who doesn't? Well, not me. They got bags now under my eyes. So, so uh, anyway, so I get a call from my urologist yesterday. Uh, uh, he, just, he would like to see you. He would do a follow-up. Because he wasn't the one that did the radiation and all of that, but he's the one that did the biopsy and discovered the cancer. And uh, so I said, okay, I don't really want to go over there. I don't want to leave the house. You know, it's not safe. And she says, I understand. Uh, so they made an appointment for me. And then I listened to her message, and she said, well, we can do a telemedicine visit. So I just said, let's do I called him back today. I said, let's do that. I don't want to have to, you know, take the chance. And I said, I've been radiated this year. You know, my immunity is compromised, so on and so forth. And she said, fine, he'll call you, you know, uh, 445 on Friday, you know. So uh, yeah. So I, we're, I'm doing the, the telemedicine thing now. Well, that's that, uh, right up your alley. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he he can't do any of the blood tests or anything like that. But, you know, I've got my most recent blood work I can give him. So uh, that should be good enough for him. And, you know, that's, that's what's been happening, you know. Um, we're, we're, I'm so sick and tired of being indoors and so loopy from it. I mean, I get up every morning and I'm exhausted. Exactly. That's how I feel. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, do I have anything to look forward to today? No. Uh, not really. Lunch? <laughs> you know? It's Groundhog Day. It's ground. It is Groundhog Day. Every day, it's the same day. Yeah. Same thing. Every day. You know. Uh, and then Marjorie. Well, this is uh, hmm? what it must be like to be in prison, right? Well, in prison, you don't really have uh, computers and TV sets and. You know, you don't have all the luxuries of life, you know. Uh, prison would be worse. Well, I mean. But I mean, still, 
I but, can see why those guys go stir crazy. Well, when I first started gabbing it up, uh, I didn't go out for two weeks. Didn't leave the house. Suddenly realized one day I hadn't left the house for two weeks. That's and, incredible. Yeah, and I, because we have such a big place here, 2,500 square feet, it, it doesn't, it, you know, but even that, even those walls will climb in on you after a while, you know? So, uh, I mean, we're fortunate that we're here. We're also fortunate we're not paying rent because we're, we're currently in court on this whole thing. <laughs> the world's longest protracted legal battle. Oh, it did. It, what happened was, folks, and you know, I've been in a legal battle not with the landlord, but with the guy who rented the apartment to us, who kind of intimated that it wasn't uh, he it wasn't a uh, what do you call it uh, when you uh, when you le- when you lease an apartment that's already leased, uh, it's a sublet. 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 He didn't say it was a sublet. And it was a three-year deal, which is not a sublet. Sublets are only allowed to be two years, and you can't charge any more than you're already paying for rent, okay? And he was charging us double, all right? And he was three years. So that's what we're fighting. And the landlord is on our side because we're being sued along with the landlord by him, okay? So we had to counter sue. Got it, folks? Okay. So we've been sitting. So we sat here for about five years before the court case went to court, and then when it went to court, about halfway through, COVID hits and the courthouse is shut down. So now we're going. We're still not even. Don't even have our resolution. I don't even remember where we left off. I think we'll have to start all over again just so I can remember what's been said already. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, getting ridiculous. It's unbelievable. I've never heard anything like that. I know the court moves slow, but that's really, uh, well, ridiculous. Well, courts move very slow. What makes it move slower are the other parties involved. I mean, this guy did one thing after another. It's kind of like the, I kind of think of him as the as my version of Trump in which he stalls everything. You know, uh, oh, no, I want this, and I'm going to, I want a resolution to the case. I want the judge to make a summary judgment. So the summary judgment then costs us another 20 grand in legal fees, while the judge then says, nah, no summary, no summary judgment. I mean, it just goes on and on. It's insane how, how uh, completely um, arduous this whole thing is. We just go on and on. So and, what's your what's your lawyer think about this? Well, they have th- they seen things like this before? Yeah, I mean, they think that well, they haven't seen COVID before, you know. I mean, we let's see here. Uh, come, I think come January, uh, will be a year not being in court. You know, Jesus. so uh, I mean, uh, you no, know, this this. In this kind of thing has never happened before. By now, we would have had a resolution to this whole thing. I think, you know, you would think that could be resolved very quickly. But then again, then again, let's say we prevail. It's great, isn't it? It's wonderful. All of a sudden, the other guy says, "Well, uh, I don't agree with the uh, judgment, so I'm going to appeal it." So now we're in for another three years and another twenty thousand dollars worth of bills. And I mean. It just goes on and on. It never stops. Yeah. So that's where I am. How's your rent doing? <laughs> <laughs> Mine's, uh, well, so many people are moving out of San Francisco. I don't think they want, they don't care about getting us old rent control people out anymore. So. Yeah, well, uh, here in this building, they were getting upwards to seven, eight $8,000 a month for rent in some apartments. And wow. I, I don't think they're going to get that now because people are moving out of New York. Nobody wants to move into a new apartment in New York. So they were, How many I, people left New York? I heard a, the number is like... I have no idea how many have left. I'm glad because more room for us. You yeah. Know? Plus, I mean, it will bring the rents down. So, you know, I mean, what are they going to do? Rent, uh, kick us out or kick somebody else out and then have an empty apartment for a year? 
It's better they keep well, some. Well, you've got the, uh, that's the biggest apartment I've ever, 2,500, that's a nice sized house. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's no question about it. But anyway, hey, listen, our time has kind of run out here. Well, I mean, not literally. Oh, I mean, oh it's running out. It's running <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah. The next time I talk to you, let's talk about the fear of death, okay? Okay. We'll leave everybody upbeat. Ladies and gentlemen, His Majesty, Larry Bubbles <laughs> Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, just lovable. I love Larry. I just love Larry. We all love Larry. Okay? So, anyway. Um, and uh, I mentioned last night, and I'll mention it again, all you have to do is go over to your um, Alexa and say something like, uh, Echo, play Larry Bubbles Brown. Songs by Larry Bubbles Brown and Amazon Music. Uh-huh. I played April 12, 1986. It was a Saturday, and uh, <laughs> I remember this. And uh, there was a place up in Santa Rosa called the Jeremiah's. It was like you're in a basement. Echo, and- stop. Okay. Anyway, I just uh, all you have to do is do that. If you, and I think I think it, it. I don't know if it'll play it if you don't subscribe to Amazon Music. That's my only. Uh, my only question about that. But that's how you can easily hear the comedy of Larry Bubbles Brown, which I, as I said yesterday, uh, Marjorie and I listened to it at dinner time. I put that on. And we listened to it, and boy, I got to tell you, t- he's better than he's ever been. I mean, I remember him as terribly funny. I mean, he also did the weather on my show, on my radio show in San Francisco. So he was a regular cast member of the show. And I remember how funny he was, but he's funnier. So if you uh, if you get if, if, buy his album, go out. And buy, it's on it's on uh, Amazon. Just go to Amazon and say I want I want to buy that album uh, by Larry Bowles Brown, and uh, they'll uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to sell it to you. So it's only like nine ninety nine or something like that. Let's make him rich a penny at a time. Okay, that'd be a good idea. Well, I guess it's time for me to uh, admit people to the uh, program, and let's see what happens here. Um, uh, they're all in the process of joining, uh, but nobody... Oh, there we go. Now we're seeing people. Uh, and uh, so far, we've got uh, Brian Neary, and there is... Oh, there, there's Rocky and uh, his friend, Trucker Steve. Hello, Trucker Steve. Hello, Rocky. Yeah, Hi. yeah. Yeah, he's the uh, he's the mascot here at the show, um, <laughs> and and Adrian is the poster child. Uh, <laughs> you know, Bubbles and Feldo Feldman, David Feldman, when they were on your show, yeah, those guys would nonstop laugh. They had so many inside jokes. <laughs> they used to always say the Ooh, Vanessa, I want to undress ya. They do all the names. He does that. Bangkok, he- you. He does. Oh my he, God! I can repeat all those jokes. He, you know, he does that on the show, on mm-hmm. his uh, on his album rather. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Vanessa, I want to caress you, you know, and things yeah, like that. All yeah, those. yeah. Uh, but he, um, yeah, no, he, he, he was just. I mean, and he's better than he's ever been. That's that's what's interesting. You know, you don't you don't think that you figure after so many years he's using the same material over and over again. I mean, I saw Bob Rubin. When he did a he did a thing that wound up on Netflix, and he was doing the same material he was doing twenty years ago. Bubbles isn't, I, and, and uh, I mean there are a few lines that he always uses. You know, like what he always likes to open up with: uh, "Somebody stole my identity." Good, now he has no life, and that kind of sets up the whole <laughs> audience for who he is. You know, so but uh, funny guy, funny guy, yep. just terrific. Um, so anyway, uh, is anybody else going to call? I'm sitting here waiting. You know, I'm getting very frustrated lately because the numbers on yeah. the amount of people listening to this thing are way down, and I don't know why. Maybe it's just everybody was tr- is trumped out and mm-hmm. tired of hearing about that, and uh, you know, we've become, I guess, boring that way. I don't know. We're the harbingers of doom. Well, like, for instance, Dr. Doom, or as we know him, Charlie Wallace, is here tonight. 
and I'd play your theme song, but uh, 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 what do you call it? Won't let me. The uh, people yeah. over at, uh, at uh, what am I on? Oh, YouTube. Uh, won't let me. They then demonetize me for playing it. So uh, these are people who died, died. I don't think they'll, they can find that one. If I just hum it, you know. If I were to talk over it, I found that they they, they can't figure out what it is. But yeah. then that kills the purpose of playing it. <laughs> but anyway, Doctor Doom, what's the count and the amount? Uh, well, we had another over three thousand people dead today. One dead every twenty-seven seconds. Mm -hmm. Death count is up to two hundred ninety-two thousand. Do you feel we're like sitting around dodging bullets? Do you get that yeah. feeling? That's exactly how I feel. You know, uh, what is it? Today we found out Ellen DeGeneres has it. Oh, God. Um, well, my question is, how, how stupid do some people get? I mean, couldn't she have avoided it? Just not do her show the way she was doing her show. She was inviting a small audience in, and she was out there, and she's dealing with people every day. Of course she's going to get it. But if it, she did it from home... She wouldn't. Increase the risk. You know, I mean, they're increasing the risk of getting it. Marjorie wanted to see her uh, her her girlfriend tomorrow for lunch. And I said, uh-uh. I don't want you going out to lunch. Not now. Not while this thing is, uh, you know, becoming a Petri dish out there. And she agreed with me. I said, you know, if you were doing anything else but saying, we're going to go to a restaurant. They were going to eat indoors. Hmm. Then I went, eh. you know, well, they can't eat outdoors now. It's too cold to do that. But They eat outdoors in the tent with those plastic walls that look yeah, like yeah, windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't serve any purpose, does it? <laughs> Might as well be no. indoors. Well, you know, if you're outdoors and then they got these uh, heat lamps over you, that's fine. But, you know, if it's raining, I guess you could get an electric shock from that. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, he died, what, from COVID? No, from avoiding COVID. You know. I don't know. I just, uh, uh, how, many do, how many died yesterday? 3,100. 3,100. 3, yeah. yeah. 3,112. Well, oh, thank you. He's better than you are, Charlie. You're letting the, <laughs> he, did, he, 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 got, he had the 12. Yeah. Uh, it was supposed to be even more today. Hmm? Another new record today. Yeah, well, we're we're number one. We're number one. You know, it's funny that a uh, certain uh, former president of the United States, <laughs> I like to think of him that way now, already <laughs> hasn't mentioned a thing about any of this. No. You know, I think in his speech in Georgia he mentioned it. You know, and how sad he was that people were dying of this. But I, I keep saying to myself, how does he sleep at night knowing how badly he let this country down? Which then brought me to another thing where I was talking with Marjorie, and she was complaining about the fact that she's got a friend who's a really good friend of hers who voted for Trump, okay, and is a staunch Republican. And I said, you know, I understand being a staunch Republican, some people have that basic philosophy that republicanism engenders. I don't argue it. It's a different philosophy from mine, okay? And so we're arguing about the way we do things. But how you can be a Republican and defend Donald Trump is beyond me, you know? I mean, you should think that if, you know, Donald Trump is ruining your brand. I mean, the Republicans are never going to survive this. They're going to have to change their name and move to another state, you know. Uh, uh, so, I mean, I just said, how can, you, how can you be a Republican and then say this morally corrupt uh, uh, person who has literally let the country down by not helping, you know, making sure that COVID didn't attack this country, uh, how can you defend that? You know, you can still be a Republican, but, you know, and just say, oh, I'll vote for you know, some other person. You don't have to vote for a Democrat. There are other parties, you know. But how you can vote for Trump, how you can just uh, go along with that kind of behavior is beyond me. So, you know. Well, there we go, talking about Trump again. 
Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Nice having you here. Go somewhere else where they're talking about wax lips or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Uh, and is anybody but you guys going to call tonight? I mean, it's just been slow. Really slow. Anyway. You think they're all holiday shopping or something? What's oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Online? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're out there holiday <laughs> shopping. Yeah. yeah. I bought another couple of pairs of pants today, a slightly larger size because of COVID expanse. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, I, uh, because the other ones I bought were a little baggy. They were, it wasn't that they were big, it's just the size was very loose size. So I got skinnier legs, but with the larger size waist. And it, I think they'll be fine. And that was my, that was my shopping for today. I did the Best Buy. Best Buy pulled up and they stuck it in the back door. Really? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, for my son. Mm -hmm. I got one of those uh, VR, the new VR oh, stuff yeah. with the uh, headphones for his video games. So, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Marjorie, so, uh, Marjorie but, bought me. You know, I got it for him. What? Well, he asked for it, but then I can play around with it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Marjorie, a, a couple of years ago, bought me one of those. Mm -hmm. And we sent it back. Yeah, because I yeah, those did, are the old ones. Hmm? But, you know those some of those you can put your phone here. They had to download these things, and they showed like a roller coaster and stuff like that. But this one should be pretty good. Well, it, it was. I'm sure it was pretty good. I mean, the one she bought was top of the line, and it was what her people in her office. It was like three hundred bucks, you know. And mm. um, but I had her send it back because I said I'm not going to get much use out of this. I, you know, I do play video games. But I really don't need to be that immersive mm -hmm. when I play it, you know. So uh, I, I just I, uh, I well, we sent it back. Now I'm at some point I might want to get one, you know. What yeah. I do want to get is the PlayStation Five. If anybody wants um, to know what to get me for my upcoming birthday, you know. Of course, you can't <laughs> lay your hands on one. Uh, Did you see Saturday Night Live? They did a the the one guy who the the guy from Brooklyn or whatever you call yeah. he he did the Eminem and he was singing about getting a PS5 to Santa. Oh, I see. It, no, I didn't. it was actually pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I you know uh, here's what happens every year at Christmas there is an item that you can't lay your hands on. Yeah. Every year. This it's year. Available. You know now uh, t tell me this is, is not Sony one of the biggest electronic companies in the world. <laughs> Yeah. Is it not, uh, does it not have large manufacturing plants all over the globe? Yeah. So you would have thought, maybe it's just a big mistake on my part, but you would have thought that they could have done something about it, that they could have made more than they needed rather than less. But what they do is they only make a handful of them so that people rush in and buy them and they're all jumping over each other and then... Everybody's trying to lay their hands on one, and those who have got them can turn around and sell them for five thousand a piece and whatever. And they create this uh, this glut, you know, this this uh, the desire for it and the lack of the actual product. And then after Christmas is over, guess what happens? All of a sudden, you can walk into Best Buy and it's on a shelf. You know. And then guess what happens the next year? Oh, they do the same thing. Well, next year it's some doll or something like yeah. that. Uh, when well, they do the PS, those mm -hmm. PS5s, like you say, they know year after year that what kind of demand they're going to get. They know how to solve that problem. But yeah, they oh, just... they could have made enough. They absolutely oh, yeah. could have made enough. And, and Best Buy would take as many as you could give them, right? But uh, on the other hand, you know, you also have the, uh, the uh, Xbox releasing mm -hmm. their new model this year. They've already released theirs as well. But theirs doesn't seem to be as popular. It doesn't seem to have that, you know, that... Because have you seen this thing? It looks like a spaceship, right? Yeah. It's got like a gull wing on it or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, look at Rocky. Hello, Rocky! <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I'll throw an imaginary ball. Let's see if he goes to chase it. <laughs> I used to do that to dogs. I would go, hey, hey, right, right? Right? I didn't even have a ball in my hand. And I would go, whoa! And the dog would go running, and then they go, huh? Where? Where's the ball? You know. And I went, well, it's not there. You know. 
But anyway, so, so every year we have some kind of item that you can't lay your hands on. Um, this year it's, believe it or not, the PlayStation and toilet paper. Now, if, go figure that one out. <laughs> yeah. Again. Uh-huh. Again. Again, with, didn't we already say how stupid that was the first time? And yeah. then I thought it was a joke the second time. And then when I went to Costco, the line was from the back where they had those pallets and yeah. the cleaning area all the way back. And I started making a U-turn for people in line to get one one thing. One, one thing, uh, like I just want the bounty paper towels. That's all I want. Yeah. You know, and they don't <laughs> have they haven't had those in for weeks. Yeah. And Shecky, yeah, Shecky, every time he goes to uh, Costco looks for them just for me and he, he says they're not there anymore it's like bounty never made them so i mean they're the, they're the hot the, if you want to give a, a gift this christmas to somebody and you can find some bounty paper towels give them that is oh and by the way i went online to see how much they cost one oh, no. place was selling 52 dollars yeah oh my god and that was off of amazon Amazon has some for 36, maybe 30, something like that. But an amazing amount of, uh, of, of, of coin for bounty paper towels. And asswipe, forget it. You know, we've, we've, we're hoarding it in here. Marjorie went out, as she said, every time you order from Costco, get another thing of, of toilet paper. And so every time I get a new thing of toilet paper. And we've, now we've got enough in there that, you know, Unless we get a bad case of the runs, we're good for another couple of months. You guys better not leave the house because someone's going to rob your yeah. place and leave all those DVDs and go straight for the toilet paper and masks. <laughs> well, Shecky was going to come over for Thanksgiving, and he was going to try and get me the bounty paper towels. And he said, if I get the bounty paper towels, I want you to meet me down at the car to protect me because somebody is probably going to try and steal the bounty paper towels out of my hand. And I said, you're probably right. You know, uh, I, I said, you know, you overestimate my neighborhood. Yeah, right. Uh, so anyway, but um, what else is there to talk about? You know, I, I was looking and um, there is some, uh, what is it? Rush Limbaugh was talking on his show about secession. That yeah. he's, what's that all about, Charlie? Uh, I just saw a headline saying that there were a bunch of uh, <clears throat> southern states that were talking about, you know, red states that were talking about uh, it's time to secede again. You know something? Let them go. Let them. <laughs> let them go. You know, we should have no, let them go. The well last time. What? It didn't work out very well for them last time. Well, no, I just think that it let them go. I mean, uh, we should have let them go last time. Then we wouldn't have to put on putting them now, you know. Plus, this country's too big. We could, we could, and and what would it be if they seceded? Like, you know, uh, Georgia would Georgia secede? I don't <clears throat> think so. Mm. No. Uh, would Florida secede? You think so? You think so, Jeffrey? Yeah. Yeah. Turn on your mic, uh, Jeff. Jeff, turn turn on your mic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. You hear me now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you know, Trump is moving to Florida. Yeah. So he could take the state. Well, he has to leave. move. He has to move to Florida because <laughs> we don't want him here. You know, it's and he knows we don't want him here. Um, Jared and uh, Ivanka are all PDOT because they don't think they're wanted here in New York. And New York social circles are not going to accept them any longer. So we got that one going. And then on top of that, Melania wants out of the White House as soon as possible. If they could do it day after tomorrow, she'd do it. She's packing already. You know, he's saying we're going to win, but he, she's packing. Um, so that's, uh, that's that. Okay. I bet she's going back to Europe when she files the divorce papers. Well, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, you know. I can't, I mean, I can't see her staying with that idiot. 
I, I well, I you know, I supposedly when they when he won the presidency, he wanted her to come to Washington to live in the White House, and so she held him up at that time, uh, saying, uh, "Well, I want to renegotiate the prenup if we're going to do that." So they supposedly renegotiated the prenup, so she can walk away and do pretty damn well, well. and I and I and take and take uh, the little Fair devil on. spawn with her. You know, um, so little little da little Damien uh, Trump. I wonder what the boy thinks of his dad. Um, Does you know, anybody even know? Nobody's ever. You don't hear from him. Any well, I I have to give her credit for that. I mean, I think that keeping him away from the public was a very good thing to do for him. Not for any reason that he would come to harm or whatever, but that he would then be put in the crosshairs. You know, if he was suddenly used as a prop by Trump, then he would become fair game for barbs and slings and arrows. And I think she just didn't want him to have to be part of that. You know, so, I mean, we mm -hmm. hardly know what the kid looks like these days. I think he's grown up a bit. You know. Yeah, he's tall. He's, he's taller tall than Donald now. Yeah, really? I mean, yeah, those pictures of him on the side before, the last ones I remember, then I saw him walking uh, from the helicopter. Yeah. And yeah, he's taller than Donald and yeah. Yeah. Grew really well, quick. So, yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, let me see here. What else do I have we have to talk about? Is anybody else going to call this program? Is anybody... Or uh, it, is it, has it come to the stalwarts, as it were? You know, I mean, um, uh, I, I, I've been used to having like twelve people on a time. The, the Monday yeah. shows we get like twelve people. You know, uh, that show gets a lot of people. But uh, that, that, huh? It's well, the season. It's the, you think it's the season? Yeah. Nobody's out shopping. Okay, so that's not an excuse. And there's no Christmas parties. And there's no Christmas parties. No. You know, all that's left is this program. <laughs> it's getting dark early, too. Maybe people, you know, their bodies are shutting down. But wait a minute. Right. My, I know, show, but my show goes on when it's dark. Well, not where, where you are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that could be it. It could be that uh, everybody shuts down or something. I don't know. I have no <clears> idea. Um, let me see here. What else is in? What else is in the news? Let me let me go over. You know what I do? Let's go over to Drudge and see what he's talking about lately. You know, he's become a little more reasonable. I think because you know uh, it turns out that um, it turns out that. Um, uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, well, forget it. Let me see. Here. You were talking oh. last night about CNN being yes. the number one. CNN. They're, they're advertising that now during their commercials. Yeah. They're oh, putting no. CNN. They're putting something about the the most watched news station or something. They're putting yeah. some logo now. They're number one. Yep. MSNBC is number two. Wow. Then I think, I may be wrong about this, it's Newsmax. And mm. then it's Fox. And wow. I think what it was, they put all their all their eggs in one basket, and those people who wanted to be watch the Trump network felt that they did were doing better with Newsmax or OAN than they were doing with Fox. You know, so I mean, I think Fox is in in trouble finally. Yeah, <laughs> after like how many years being at the top? You know, but. Um, it looks like it's going to be, uh, uh, you know. And then the big thing they're talking about over there at uh, at uh, uh, Fox, when I tuned in, was, uh, you know, this show with the women on it, at Outnumbered, I think it is. It, it's noon our time here, uh, in which uh, women sit on couches so you can try and look up their dress. You, you know that show. Um, anyway, I, I used to think of it as Roger Ailes' uh, girl pool. You know, uh, but he, um, uh, but uh, they were doing the whole thing about, they were just so hot on the, the, the Hunter Biden story. 
oh. about the fact that the FBI is investigating his taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we all know Hunter Biden is kind of a wild card, okay? You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, he loves dad, but, you know, he's, he's kind of stupid. You know what I'm saying? But you can't blame that on Joe Biden. You know, what his son does is what his son does. I mean, you remember Billy Carter? Yeah. <laughs> Billy Beer. Yeah, you remember <laughs> Billy Carter? God, he was, you know, he was a piece of work. Uh, I mean, there's always the black sheep of the family. No offense, uh, no offense intended, Charlie, please. No. Okay. Yeah. So why is it black sheep is the bad sheep? Why isn't it the white sheep? Yeah, trying not to, I'm trying to be politically correct here, okay? Uh, but anyway, so um, anyway, what else can we talk about? What what else, what, all, what else is in the news? I saw a video of Nancy Pelosi mm -hmm. comparing how many people died in World War II oh. to like who yeah. died up to date now. Mm -hmm. It was 291,000 and so for uh, servicemen that died in World War II. Uh, wait a minute. World War II, I think, was 500 and maybe 20,000. Yeah, well, this, like this, was, uh, yeah. this was a video on Now Politics hmm. from that website. Yeah. And it was Nancy Pelosi looking at a point, pointing at a, at a board with the numbers on it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. By the way, we've been, we've been joined by Todd, who, like uh, Steve, is a trucker. And you're in, are, you're in your, are you in your truck now, uh, Todd? Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. I, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, where are right, you? Cool. Where, where are you in this great uh, land of ours? Well, I was, oh, I'm happy that you guys caught me. Um, I was uh, leaving out of uh, Dallas and heading to uh, Vandalia, Ohio. Uh huh. And and what are you packing there? What's on the truck? Uh, I am hauling um, what is it? Procter and Gamble. A Procter and Gamble, and and a, yeah. a a bunch of products or any toilet paper by any chance? <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if you guys need some, let me know. I will come and bring everything to you. Even though I got my toilet paper from um, Dollar Tree. So I, I don't mind, you know, whatever yeah. I got back there, I'll yeah. give it all oh, to you guys. Oh, okay, and good. And I'd like to say hi to everybody there that I'm looking at. Yeah. Because I'm <laughs> sorry I have not been around for a while because I went through a lot of stuff. Well, so I, what's, what's a I'm lot of stuff? I'm very sorry. What's a lot of stuff? Well, um, I, um, it seemed like I had COVID for a minute there. Ooh. Um, Ooh. I got, um, other people that had COVID uh, that I saw, and um, they said that um, they had it, mm -hmm. and then I had to quarantine myself because my father's 87 years old. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what happened is um, I'm not going to even, you know, try to uh, bring, bring that to my father. So right. I stayed over the road. The whole entire the COVID's been going on. I've stayed over the road. Yeah, I've not gone home for Thanksgiving or anything. Yeah. Now let me ask you: Did you wind up having COVID or not? Um, as far as I know, no. I I got tested the two times I told you guys. That was in the beginning, but I haven't got tested again. <laughs> but I went through some stuff, but I don't think it was. COVID. What, what What was the stuff? I mean, just. Um, I had fever, pain. Um, I still have back pain and stuff like that, breathing problems and stuff. But I that, don't. That could have been COVID. Maybe don't get too yeah. don't get too close to my screen. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> you don't want me to get too close. <laughs> no, I, no, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, no, but you could have had COVID. You know, I mean, there's such a thing as as a lighter case of it. You know, not everybody dies from COVID. Not everybody winds up in the hospital. <laughs> But enough yeah. enough wind up in the hospital that it's causing you know problems to our medical system. But, exactly. But uh, what does it sound it, like to you, Brian? Does it sound like he maybe had COVID? 
Yeah, I would think of. Yeah, I mean, especially flu. I mean, you can have flu too, but yeah. just a respiratory uh, flu. Standard flu is a respiratory. Disease did you have? Also. Did you have a flu shot this year at all? Um, talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Tell um, no, I don't ever have the flu shots because um, I have very, uh, very, very uh, like weird skin. So what happens is if I take the flu shot. Wait a minute! I notice I you. Ha- I notice you have you have weird skin. It's a black color. Oh, so, you're just, so, so you're gonna do that with me, man? Seriously, <laughs> I missed you so much, and I'm sorry to have been around. And you're gonna do the skin thing? Yeah. Well, oh, what well, I'm saying. Well, wait a minute! You started it. You said I've got this skin thing, and of course, you know what's my job? My job is to make a joke out of stuff people say. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's very communicable. That was that was awesome. It, but no, what I'm saying is, well, did you, you know, say that was very I, I communicable? I said communicable, like you know, a comedic, comedic. Yeah, comical. Comical. Yeah, 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 comical. Yeah. Oh. No, yeah. You know, um, no. Uh, what happens is, um, every now and again, I gotta get this shot uh, that helps, you know, with my eczema and stuff. Oh, okay. So, you know, it, it works good. Yeah. So anyway, so you, so you. Um, uh, uh, so you didn't get a flu shot. It could be you got the flu. I mean, you know, you can you can get the flu and you you got breathing problems and you got aches and pains and and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I get it every year. You know. uh, 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 I don't. I get the flu shot every year. I don't take a chance with it at all. Are you going to get the? Well, are you going to get the uh, the COVID flu shot? Vaccine. Yes, you are. Okay, I'm going to get it because my father. Is gonna get it, and I want to hang with my dad. So yeah, you know I'm gonna get it. Uh, I got friends in uh, Germany that mm-hmm. are real worried about it. I got, you know, because you know I got friends all over the world. Right. Everybody seems to be worried about it, and I'm the one that is not. But yet at the same time, it's probably gonna do more damage to me than it would to any of them because half of them got COVID over there in Germany, and all my other friends. And mm. it didn't even do anything to them. They had little sniffles. They didn't have to go to the hospital. Yeah, I mean, it can, it, 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 yeah. And then there's the not so moderate case. I mean, there are people my age, you know, and I'm 80, who get it, and yes. and it's not like a death sentence. They get it. They get a little cold. They don't feel well for a couple of days, and they're good to go again. And other people get it so badly they have to be intubated and they die. Yeah. Well, um, my dad's. But I, I'm not going to say his age um, on the show because I'm not trying to get shot from a retired police officer. That's my dad. Um, all I can say is he's 80 years old. I'll be nice on that. Uh, hopefully, Pop, okay, you heard me just say that. That was it. He's the same age his as I am. Brother, hmm? His brother passed away uh, uh, very horribly, added on with COVID. And his brother was a lot older. Okay. And um, he's really not really saying a whole lot about that. And like I said, Pop, again, please remember, we go to the gun ranges. Let's just, just keep it nice, please. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, because we're both very, um, you know. We, so we so your father's the same age. No your father's the same age I am. Uh, how old are you again, sir? I'm going to be 81 in, uh, well, two weeks. Uh, what, next, next week. week. Next week. Okay, well, you're young compared to my dad. Really? How's yes, you're how- young compared to my dad, but no disrespect. Being an African-American individual, my dad is, he still gets carded. That's some funny shit, bro. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yo, Listen. I'm serious. Yo, no joke. My dad had another girl that was like 20-something years old hollering at him. I'm like, how you can't tell that my dad's over 80 years old? Wait a minute. Now, now look, I got to say something. And I, uh, the, the reason I'm envious of black people, and, and since tonight, tonight one third of our panel are black, okay? Um, uh, I'm getting to feel like Joe Biden. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, now I forgot what I, see, I forget what I'm going to say. This happens all the time to me. I'm going age, to how they look. Oh, oh yeah, 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 young yeah. yeah, black and me. Black guys look much younger than white guys. We white guys age badly. Black guys 
don't. I mean, you know, I, I believe that your father would get carded. It's just, you know, the the luck of the draw. I can tell a secret if everybody wants to know. And I see my man as an African-American individual on there will back everything up that I'm he saying. He doesn't look, Charlie does not look, what, 70, Charlie? Yeah, I'll be 71 in February. Does he, he look 70? go to the clubs together and go over there and get chicks together. Yes, <laughs> he got the hair, but at the same time, you, you ain't got to look at it that way. That's right. You got to look at the mindset, the way he talks, the way he knows about, you know, things that's going on in the world, mm -hmm. um, you know, what the kids are doing, the young people, you know, all of that. And plus, yeah, nobody worries about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, what I'm saying is it, it, it for some reason, there's something with the melanin in your skin or something that... The, melatonin is what they call it. No, melatonin is <laughs> melatonin is a vi is a vitamin you take to put you to sleep. It's more called melanin. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, it helps you, but you get the rest. Yeah, I could make a joke. Watermelon is what it is. It's uh, no, but no, no, that, that helps. That helps. No, but I, I got, I got the, I got the secret. Yeah, I got the secret. Let me know when you're ready to hear it. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. <clears throat> okay, I'm ready. Take your time. Yeah. All right, now with me, what I do is I eat a lot of peanuts. Is that it? Yeah. I drink a lot of water. That's Stay too. hydrated. That too. I, I eat a lot of peanuts. I eat a lot of, yeah, you said watermelon. Yeah, you know, when I can, but not like often. Yeah. But peanuts, I, I eat like, I don't know how many cans of this. A day. Really? I use pistachios. Hey. Oh, I'm, no, I'm no, a big pistachio no, guy. Now, wait a minute. Let, right. me, let me ask Charlie something. Pistachios, do you buy them in the shell or do you get them shelled? In the shell. I buy them shelled. You know yeah. why? Because I'm a lazy motherfucker. <laughs> that's why. It's not to say because you eat less. That's why you have them shelled. It yeah. takes you longer to eat them, so you don't yeah. eat as much. Plus, then you got to get the vacuum cleaner out. You know, it, it's just messier. <laughs> what else are you gonna do? And plus, they now have they now have you ready for this honey roasted shell oh pistachios. My God. Oh no, man. man, they're to die for. They're to die for. The one die thing. exactly. And my die. other my other uh, uh, big deal is cashews. I love cashews. Oh, me too. I like cashews yeah. too. Man. So. But uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, so you eat the, you eat your nuts is what you're saying. Yes. That'd oh, okay. Be a, that'd be a lot of peanuts. Oh, penis. Oh, a lot of penis. <laughs> the the penis. He eats lots of penis. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, God. oh, this is getting silly. This is getting really yeah. silly. Yeah, I I I I dated a lot of I dated a lot of Asian. And I talked to white girls, and they said, why are you always dating Asian girls? I said, because they hold their age very well. I said, all you white girls need makeup. They yeah. keep older. <laughs> and they used to get so pissed off at me. I said, I don't care. I'm not trying to get laid from you. I'm trying to get your friend over Well, you could, you could have fooled me by saying you liked Asian women, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you used to see the path. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, if you want beautiful-looking progeny, Mm -hmm. That's the oh, yeah. way to go, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, yeah. Oh, yes, uh, Todd. I love Asian women. Been with them for all my life. <laughs> yeah. Man, but Vietnamese yes, so. and Chinese. Oh no, he's right. I'm just saying, they're very nice. They're very respectful. Their skin is awesome. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to say anything about. Uh, their properties. He knows what I'm talking about. So I believe in it. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's awesome. Oh my God, it's awesome. Hey, hey Todd, I mean, and then you know what we were told all the time? Like, oh, oh, they smell like fish. And I said, uh, you guys, you guys can think whatever you want. Just you stay away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't thin out Ooh, the wife is from the Philippines. Oh, your wife is from the Philippines. Oh, uh -huh. right? yeah. yeah. Come on, Jeff. <laughs> Whose wife is in the Philippines? I don't, I don't want to be racist, but then they used to call that yellow fever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it, it's okay. I don't okay. care. Yeah, I got the feeling. Oh. 
Mm. I'm hot. <laughs> yeah. I always, you know what I always found? Uh, here's the thing. I don't know what it is about me. I grew up uh, in Marin County, California. I was the only Jew in the, in the entire county, practically. We had a Jewish community center, and there were about 28 families who belonged to it. That was it, okay? And so uh, the only women I could usually go out with were Gentiles. And then all of a sudden, one day, I met up with a Jewish woman, and I went out with her, and I never went back. <laughs> I just found Jewish women terrific. You know, because to begin with, when it comes to sex, they're the best. They, you know, they know how to trap a guy, okay? And they have studied the art. And the old saying is, do you know how you make a Jewish woman stop having sex? You marry her. <laughs> So, uh, but I mean, I just, I, 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 I think about it and most of the women in my life over the years, uh, were, uh, were, were, were Jewish. Um, mm -hmm. uh, although, uh, you know, uh, I, I could, I could go over to Italian, things like that, you know, but, uh, I, I, I never, I never got obsessed by it. It was just, that's the way it turned out, you know? And then I came to New York. And New York, when it comes to Jewish women, it's like this is where they were manufactured, you know? <laughs> I mean, you would walk down the street, and every block you would see a woman that was just stunning. Not just sexy, stunning. And they were usually Jewish, you know, so... We saw Chris Rock, uh, all my friends this is in his heyday, you know. Yeah. We saw Chris Rock at San Jose, mm -hmm. and all my black friends, they all have Asian girls. So we were up in the first five or six rows, and we sat right there, and Chris Rock came out, and he goes, oh, my God. He goes, what's all the brothers with the Asian girls? He goes, what happened? You fly into San Jose. Hip, here's your Asian girl. Here's your Asian girl. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, you know, but I, uh, so I, I, I mean, Marjorie's Jewish, you know, uh, my uh, second wife uh, was, uh, my second wife, uh, third wife was Jewish. Uh, my uh, second wife, Ronnie, converted, not because mm. I wanted her to, she wanted to, okay? Mm. My first wife wasn't. She was totally Gentile, you know. That's why it, it is. Didn't last. I don't have an excuse for why the other three didn't, two didn't last after that either. And the one this one is lasting is where the fuck are we gonna go? <laughs> you know, at, our, at our age, you know, we look at each other every now and then. She's lying in bed. I'm lying in bed, and we look at each other and go, "So this is what it winds up being, huh?" <laughs> you know, this, this is where, 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 you know, this is it. You know, you could do a lot worse. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm very lucky. You know, I've, I've, I've got a, what is that you're doing? What is that you're, is, what is that you're doing, Todd? Because it's not. Trying to get my attention to my puppy. Come get it so oh. you guys can see her. Oh, that's right. He has a puppy. He has a puppy. Yeah, the last time I remember. Uh, uh, Steve, who is also a Steve trucker. Steve has a dog. Has a, has yes, a dog, he's... Rocky, who goes everywhere oh, with him. Right. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Hey. Oh, wow. There he goes. <laughs> you got your fingers? Wait a minute. That wasn't a... Oh, that. Who's that? A German Shepherd? No, yeah, I... She's an uh, Australian Shepherd. Oh, really? No, yeah, okay. Can, let me see if I can get some light back here. Because I got, I got the top bunk. Normally, I have it up. So that's the reason why you can't mm. see me that, that well. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, she's... Man, she probably... Oh. Can't see her. Can yeah. you see her? Yeah. A little bit. Uh, not very well. Hold on a second. Well, when when you get to the point where you can afford electricity, let us there know. You go. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, there, there we go. The flashlight. I'm sorry, yeah. man. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll pull her close. But yeah, it's you know, it's, when you're in the truck. I mean, I got all the light on in here. Now, but you, just Todd. No reason. Todd, you're not married, right? Oh, no, I'm sorry, all of you gentlemen. I am very fortunate that I did have an opportunity to be married when I was, uh, mm, let me see, she cheated on me, 
and I left her in my house and all my stuff's been in storage for 17 years. I think I told you that story a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm very fortunate never to be married. Therefore is why I have all my hair. (laughs) (laughs) So you got no hair goes. Oh, 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 boy. Come on. Now, wait a minute. Now, now, Steve, on the other hand. Yeah. Oh, wow. You got dreads. You got dreads. Yeah, wow. but dreads, yes, sir. So, oh, wow. I want That's a hint. I got to find a joint now. I really feel like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway. well, hey, you know, if I come up to New York, I'll bring some from, from Texas. They got some good weed down there. Oh, really? Oh, oh okay. yeah. It's, 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 it's not that expensive. Yeah, well, we're, we're getting weed all over the country now. It's becoming legal almost yeah, everywhere. Yeah, but you got to get it from the right places, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, you got to remember, if I get anybody on the panel weed, I'm a truck driver. I can't touch it. Right. I can't touch it. Because you I get t- you get tested, right? Correct. Oh, random tests. Same yeah. with me. How, and, Correct. And what do they do? do? They stop you on the side of the road and say, here, pee in a cup? Oh, it would be nice if they tried that, but no. But, like, if you get in an accident or... Yeah. Uh, if something happens, yeah. you know, they're going to be like, you know, check your blood, check everything else like that. Well, guess what? I've been driving for 17 years as an owner operator, mm-hmm. which usually owner operators are allowed pretty much. They're not allowed. Let me let me rephrase that. They're not allowed to smoke weed, but they can smoke whatever. Mm-hmm. And the only time they get in trouble is if they get in an accident. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, with me, I'm a company driver, so. Sometimes in the system, my name will come up randomly. Mm-hmm. I have to go in and get it. Wow. A car. wow. I had that happen with the random when I was working as a company driver. It was funny, too. They were like, oh, every week, randomly, you came up. I came up like every week, every week, every week, every week. Because I had an attitude problem. Because I didn't like the loads they gave me. And I didn't like being a company driver in a, in a truck that I had to put yeah, stuff yeah. in. Uh, actually, you and I have a lot in common because I used to go out with women who didn't like the loads I gave them. So <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You guys are yeah. having a good time. It's what I do. Well, well, you're doing a good job now, sir. <laughs> and you wonder why women don't call the show. Yeah, I, well, yeah right. <laughs> right. Well, you know, well, I, I'm, uh, we had uh, got, got to get more women. That's what we got to do. More women on this show. Um, but what uh, happened to uh, them all? Uh, you had uh, three but, or four of them, I thought. Well, yeah. no, we had Kathleen. I talked to her. She's just been busy with stuff, you know, and she's moving yeah. and, and so on, and the whole COVID thing and all that. And then, uh, uh, we, you know, we get some people occasionally, women occasionally, but like guys basically call this program. I guess I'm there. Mandy calls the the day show on Mondays. Huh? Mandy. Yeah. Mandy. Yeah, but Mandy she doesn't call all the time. She calls once right. in a while. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, um, but but uh, Steve Trucker Steve is married, and uh, do you do you find that like how, how many days out of a month are you apart from each other, Steve? Uh, between each trips, I usually like to take four days, so I'm out two weeks. Yeah. Home for about four. Okay. And then do another two weeks, two to three weeks. So at this rate, if you're married for 40 years, it's really like you've only been married for seven. Right? Well, it's a lot of time apart. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, some people say, well, that, that's that got to be terrible. How, what kind of stress does that have on your marriage? But I think it might make it better, you know? Because I imagine it works, when you, it, it works for some couples, but it's, it doesn't work for everybody. Yeah, it works for you guys. Uh, I'd like to try. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just uh, a couple times. <laughs> uh, Todd, I just want to say hello to Trucker Steve. I, I, I just saw the name right there. Um, and also, that's awesome that he's able to do that because a lot of us, and he could probably contest to it that it, it doesn't really work like you know for a lot of people that you know drive trucks that yeah. try to deal with certain people because a lot of the times the certain people that you deal with are not you know compatible with you 
You know what I'm saying? It's like you think that they're nice and everything like that and everything, you know, when you get mm-hmm. to know them, and next thing you know, you go over the road and you get the Dear John letter. So now, I do know you... my man probably knows about that. And now, well, I they know... say that the yeah. divorce rate amongst truck drivers is like 75%. I'm just trying to make it 50-50. Yeah. yeah. Right. You're doing an excellent job. I How long have you been married, Steve? Uh, since 2013. And I'll tell you, the day we got married... Mm-hmm. was uh, the day after your last day on Sirius. Really? Because I was listening to your last show, and the very next day we got married. Um, I missed the last five minutes of your show that day because it was a very bad rainstorm. Mm-hmm. And my mom had a sunroof. Okay, so yeah. my water was starting to leak into the sunroof, and it has these drain lines. Well, the drain lines were starting to leak, and water started leaking onto the amp of my stereo. Oh. I couldn't hear your show for the last five minutes because of a loud squealing noise coming from the. So water you missed the live last five minutes of my last show at Sirius XM. Yeah. So I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear you say goodbye and all that. You didn't miss much. You, you want knew me to, it was your last day. You, you want me. To, you day. want me to do it for you right now? I can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, June 29th, uh, 2013. Really? Was it June 29th? Oh, yes, it was, because uh, I remember were, that on July yeah, 5th, finished. we started GabNet as a video thing okay. uh, out of a TV studio. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> you, you, boy, I, I, I'm glad you remember dates. You know who's great at remembering dates is Bubbles. Yes, yes. Bubbles, <laughs> man, he knows. Uh, like I said, I, we were talking about Lori Thompson, who was an ex-newswoman I had, and he said... She's in San Francisco hanging out or something. And I said, uh, she's getting married. And I said, oh, okay, good. He said, how old is she now? He says, oh, she's 80, uh, she's 60. He knew immediately how old she was because he, could, he can take dates and extrapolate them and figure out, you know. And he can tell me if I need, need something, like I'm doing my, you know, uh, life in the passing lane, which is the history of my life, and I forget when I did something in my life, I just call him up and he tells me. He has, he's the rain man. He's, he, you know, it's amazing. So there's your dog, Todd. Todd's got his dog. Jeff's been very quiet tonight. Jeff? I don't know why. Well, Pam was over there and, and she was hearing us and saying, you guys are just being a bunch of jerks. That's all. What do you mean? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are we being jerks about? Oh, I don't know. You know, women have different attitudes about things. Well, I think the world of Asian Pamela, women. I hope Pamela doesn't think less of me now because I think the world of her. <laughs> no. Huh? No. I want no. to earn her respect. Oh, boy. Which obviously <laughs> you haven't been able to do. But <laughs> on that list, yeah. I'm on the uh, keep kissing my ass every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Uh, so uh, she's hmm? she's fine. She's a gr- she's great. I love Pam. Pam's terrific. Oh yeah, yeah. she's terrific. Yeah. She really is. Yeah. she is so much juice and and. And uh, different things that she's doing for all kinds of people all yeah. the time. How 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 long have you been married, two of you? Oh, I think it's been thirty years. Thirty years, oh. and this isn't his first marriage. This is my second. Yeah. It's his second yeah. marriage. Yeah. And Marjorie is my fourth. Yeah. You know, and I keep telling her I'm going to keep doing it till I get it right. Yeah. You know. I think you got a good deal right now. I, I think I do. Yeah. You, you know why? Because she works. Yeah. No. Uh, no, I, she, I, 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 I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. That's Don't right. tell her I said that. She never listens to the show anymore anyway. She used to listen to it every morning when she would go to work. She'd then turn it on and hear what happened the night before. Now she just is, does the work here. She doesn't listen to the show anymore. You know. That's, that's what I used to do. I, I had uh, I had about half hour about forty five minutes to work, mm-hmm. and then I always had about an hour hour and a half home in traffic. Yeah, and that's what I used to do: listen to the show to catch up from what you guys were talking about the night before. But 
Yeah. Now, now if I miss anything, I can't listen to it because there's no traffic. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, here's here's my question. They say that by what June, we're probably going to have this juice in enough people's arms that we're not going to have a problem anymore. Mm. Do you buy that, mm. Brian or or Charlie? How about you, Charlie? I'm skeptical, but I'd like to believe it. Well, they 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 figure that they got they got to do see what they got to do is they got to do seventy five percent, and yeah, right now sixty percent of Americans <clears throat> say they would do it. Um, here's the thing I'm a little worried about. This is, I know this sounds strange, but I read that what they're going to do is first of all it's the uh, first responders, you know, and the uh, uh, the the nurses and the doctors and so on in the hospitals. Secondly. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the same people in nursing homes plus the elderly people in the nursing homes. Okay? Right. They're second in line. Third in line, me. Me. Everybody over the age of 80. Well, Marjorie is 77, I think. <laughs> and, but, or 70, maybe 76. Uh, I think it's 77. Uh, and um, she won't be able to, she'll be, she'll be like third and fourth in line. So I'll have the vaccination before she can get it. So I'm just wondering if I should just wait until she gets it to go get it too, you know, so she won't give me dirty looks for, you know, having vaccination envy. Yeah. Go and Pfizer, Pfizer and Moderna are both two shot vaccines. Yeah. The Johnson and Johnson, or whatever the, the other one is coming out. That's the one that's a one shot. -er. Yeah, yeah but, but the only problem is they uh, they 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 have to use a Q-tip to use it. It's uh, it's Johnson and Johnson Q-tips. <laughs> forget there was a joke there somewhere I was going for. Forget I, forget I even tried. Yeah, uh, I, I just think I think I think the enough supply to everybody number one, but enough all the PPE stuff to be able to deliver it, and then also I mean, we're still hurting. You know, we're opening up these new factories. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they already gave us the money to buy all the PP&E for it, uh, for starting, and mm -hmm. we're storing it in a warehouse. And we're mm -hmm. not opening you know, one factory is in the end of December, and then the other two factories are next year. But we can't, we can't risk not having you know masks and gloves and everything. So we got to buy all that stuff now. Yeah, but uh, uh, they figure they figure that we will be in a state of going the other way by the end by by June. Uh, so we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I don't mind the two shot deal. Supposedly after the first shot, you have 70% protection. Mm -hmm. And then the second shot gives you the 95 is what it's all about. Yes, Todd. I thought about everybody question. Does anybody still wear the gloves? Cause I've been over the road all the time. Mm -hmm. Everybody still wears the mask, but nobody I've seen put gloves on. I think that stopped. <laughs> no. I, I, what? Yeah. What were you going to say, Jeff? I don't wear them. Uh, yeah, just going to say, I think there's a lot less less worry about people touching things that other people are touching. I remember uh, at the very I, beginning, they had like the plastic, the paper, all these things, yeah. cardboard. No, well, listen. Stainless what, steel you, was like the big one. Uh, we would get a, a delivery from uh, Amazon and we would have them place it in our foyer and then we would spray it with disinfectant and let it sit there for two days before we'd open it. And supposedly, as time went on, they went, we really don't think it spread that way, you know, right. that it doesn't, it doesn't really survive on surfaces very long. Yeah. Uh, so, and they, the biggest thing is, you know, uh, breath to breath uh, yeah. droplets, droplets right. and things like that. <clears throat> I mean, it was good because they didn't know anything about this, and you know they they took a lot of precautions with that. I I went to Lucky's and I had gloves on the first time, mm -hmm. just to make sure, you know. Yeah. But yeah. but it, it was good to have that precaution then. But now we know more about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 so that's why I don't think Todd people are wearing gloves as much. I used to have rubber gloves. I put them on every, the first couple of month or two after after it started. I put the gloves on if I went out. If I went out at all. And, and uh, I would keep the gloves on. And then when I was through, I'd, I'd take them off. I'd wash them, spray them with some disinfectant. Then I would wash my hands two times to happy birthday to you. 
And I'd go through the whole thing. In fact, in the early days, I was showering when I came home. So, you know, I mean, I, but I think we pretty well said that wearing gloves doesn't really do much of anything. What I finally did for gloves, I had a pair of winter gloves. And I just put them on and would go out with them because it was more convenient. And then I saw Al Sharpton, and he was wearing black leather gloves mm. as gloves. And you could do that too, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, that was easier than putting on those rubber gloves because sometimes you put them on, your fingers would go right through them, you know. Sometimes they rip real easy. Yeah, what were you going to say, Jeff? Do you wash your hands every day? I mean, more than once a day. Well, every time I go to the bathroom, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't, uh, I, I, I haven't been out. I'll tell you, I haven't been out. When was the last time I was out? I think the last time I was actually out of the house here was maybe five days ago, six days ago. That's uh, good for you. Huh? That's, that's a good statistic. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and, and Monday I have to go down to get my uh, crown put in, in my, where my I have no tooth with doing the implant, and uh, they have to do a cleaning. And that's the only time I'm going out, and I'm taking a lift down there. And then I, you know, I was, I was very reticent to take a cab because I'm going, oh, cabs are filthy and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden I realized that when I get into a lift, some guys put up like a plastic thing, some plastic cloth, see-through cloth, uh, you know, that isn't exactly the most hermetically sealed thing. But every cab, because the cab drivers did it years ago, have this barrier that yeah. they they can close and you're you, there's no way you're going to be able to get droplets that way so i take a cab back i only do the lift because i can order it to go down but coming back i can just put my hand up on the street and here comes a cab and they all have these barriers inside the cab that makes it impossible for you to get through they did it so you couldn't shoot a gun through them i mean it was you know so they're they're really kind of safe in a way uh, so I feel kind of safe that way. The other day, girlfriend, however, took a, a, a bus home. But she said there were only two other people on the bus with her. So I went, okay, you know, that makes sense. And then you wear the mask and you're, you're kind of good to go. But uh, I'm looking for like a really cool mask that's good to wear and easier to wear. And they don't make them, you know. The worst, the best thing we came up with was this thing, which Phil had me buy, and it it just kind of like I don't know it 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 doesn't stick on the nose right, you know maybe it's not a big Jewish nose or whatever, but if I'm talking too long, it could actually slide down. Are are these good, Brian? Will these work? Yeah, yeah. but if you have to keep. Moving around, it's, it's a noise. Well, I have it, a couple of guys at work that have other ones instead of our regular ones, and it yeah. keeps falling off their nose, and they have it, like, strapped in the back, and it's so annoying to talk to them and distract them. Well, this is a, it's a pretty good tight fit, you know, and it, I can breathe pretty easily in it, much easier than I can with these things. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm going to try this and see what happens with it. But, yeah. uh, but he was saying it doesn't fog up the Yeah, It does, glasses. it does. They all fog up your glasses. What they should be selling is stuff you can spray in your glasses to keep them from fogging up. Right. There is that yeah, kind of stuff. What do the scuba divers Rain do? What, scuba divers, you know what they do? Spit. Oh, well, never mind. They spit in them, and they clean yeah. them out, and they put them on, and I think they don't, for some reason, they don't uh, get all fogged up. I think there up. is uh, anti-fogging stuff, because hockey players, when they're using uh, face shields, they can fog up too, so they put something on them that they don't fog up. Oh, okay, yeah. So I mean, but, Todd's aren't Todd's aren't fog, fogging up. Yeah, look at look at Todd's got uh, basically oh, glasses on too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They don't they don't fog. Hmm. They don't fog up. No. No. Don't, don't fog up at all. No. Okay. Good. Good. Got to bring them <laughs> yeah. on now. You got a little 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 itty bitty separation. Oh, Here's how they wear them in my neighborhood. Wait a minute. This is how they wear them in my neighborhood. <laughs> Shin diaper. If if I'm lucky, they do this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. 
This well, there goes my, now my earphones get all, I can't do a mask in the earphones for some reason. I don't know why they keep falling off. So you anyway. You need a pair of those $700 earbuds that Apple just released. Oh, uh, really? $700. $700 earbuds? That's what I heard on the radio station I was listening to yesterday morning. They can 700 bucks for those little white things. These are the best ones I've ever bought. These things, these little things. They're called, uh, uh, what's the name of the code? Sound Pete's. Uh, you know how much they cost? <clears throat> and they're terrific. They're just terrific. Um, 39 bucks. Mm -hmm. And they're really good. They're really yeah. good. Uh, I would not buy, I would not pay money for the, uh, those, what, what I call them, ear, ear hash pipes. You know, that's what they look like. They, they, why you got those ear hash pipes in your ear? Yeah. Just a status symbol. Yeah. But um, I, I just hope soon we can kind of... I don't think we're ever going to get back to normal. I mean, I don't think people are going to want to go to movie theaters anymore. I think they're so used oh. to not going to movie theaters that they're not going to want to go to them anymore, even though it would be safe to go to them. Um, and, uh, you know, people are going to be too used to having all their entertainment at home and so on. And uh, the only good thing will be the kids, again, will be able to play with each other. I th I'm sure your daughter misses that a lot, is that socialization. Which yeah, because last time she was at daycare, and now she's in transitional kindergarten, and she's only seen the kids on, on the you know, Zoom. Yeah, wow. yeah. And, and at her age, that's kind of sad because at least your older kids know the socialization of school, and they're simply missing that. In the case of Adrian, I don't think she's ever had that school socialization, has she? It just just daycare. So now she's advancing, and you know her her social skills aren't advancing because of that. But her, you know, she keeps educated with us for sure. But just the do you think we're going to have a whole different. set of kids growing up who don't have social skills because of this, and because they had to adapt to it? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's a good question. It's a really good question. Uh, wait a minute. I think he's going to go get our, our poster child for the show. Uh, wait a <laughs> minute. Uh, well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, here we go. No? Oh, okay. What? What did you, you say, uh, Brian? I think she's running up here somehow. Yeah. She is? Okay. Yeah, we can say goodnight. Okay. Anyway, there's our theme song. Uh, and uh, I want to thank uh, Trucker Steve for being here along with trucker Todd as well, along with trucker Adrian. Trucker Adrian. <laughs> hey, Adrian. Isn't that an adorable kid, Todd? Definitely. Adrian and Rocky. <laughs> Adrian and Rocky. <laughs> go, Adrian. Adrian, go woof. Woof. Say woof. 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 Oh, oh, oh <laughs> did you hear Rocky? Anyway, I, okay, Rocky, don't attack me. Uh, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Adrian. Hey, Say hi. Adrian. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Dear face. Wow. <laughs> He's boring now. Thank no you, more. Charlie, and thank you, Jeff. She's growing up before our very eyes. She's and so Todd, mature. Mature. Call more often, Todd. You're a lot of fun. Okay. Anyway, yeah, miss you, Todd. everybody, uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I will be a give a give a we'll give a big wave goodbye as well. There they go, ladies and gentlemen, our citizen panel. Let me just uh, unceremoniously hang up on them and thank them all for being with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, next is uh, Jack Bishop. He's here with the intersection. He'll be doing it on Skype at GabNet Live. We'll be back again tomorrow night, 10 10 30 Eastern Time in these United States of America. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And also, please be safe out there and do yourself a big favor and everybody else and wear a mask. Good night, everybody. Ribo for you.